Today we're going to create this freehand floor plan as the first part of a three-part series called Design from Plan to Perspective. I'm going to show you a way to use Procreate to create an accurate freehand design that can help you be more intuitive in the early phases of design while still delivering an accurate sketch that can be easily built in SketchUp or Rhino. Now you may say, why not just build it in SketchUp from the start? And my answer to that is that SketchUp and Rhino are such powerful programs that the same features that make your concept designs come together so quickly and with such apparent finality may actually make you resistant to modifying the design. That's why I prefer to begin all design as free hand sketching, guaranteeing that my thinking remains loose and spontaneous. After all, concept design is the time to make your design as imaginative as possible. So you want to be on the lookout for possibilities in every gesture of the pencil, even the accidental marks you make on the page. But designing freehand also has its challenges. When you design freehand, there's no built-in scale or software to make sure that, say, a three-foot wide opening is really three-foot wide. So you have to take care that your freehand sketches are loose and imaginative, but accurate enough to be useful when you switch over to SketchUp or Rhino. If you want to draw along with this exercise, I'm creating a canvas that's 5100 by 3300 pixels by 300 dpi, because this is what will print at 11 by 17, and it also works with the grid templates and the scales that you can buy on my website at the link in the description below. Now, in this exercise, we're going to be designing a living room and a dining room to fit in an open barn type space about 24 feet wide by 40 feet long. So I'm going to begin by creating a freehand square that's meant to be 24 feet by 24 feet. Now my room is 24 by 40, so I'm going to turn the 24 by 24 square into a 24 by 40 rectangle by using proportions and a little math. Realizing that I need to make the room 40 feet long, I'm going to have to add 16 feet to one of the sides. Well, I figure out that 16 feet is two-thirds of my 24 foot square, so I estimate two-thirds of one side of the square, copy that, and paste the line next door. Now I clean up some of my marks, and I'm left with a space that's 24 by 40. Now learning to estimate proportions is useful, but I'm going to take advantage of Procreate's Drawing Assist feature and add a grid to this room, dividing the 24 foot wide room into 8 sections of 3 feet each. And this will help me estimate my furniture when I draw it in freehand. So here I'm using the slider to adjust the size of the grid. So I get 8 squares across the 24 foot room. And um, sometimes you don't get completely accurate with a slider. You can also change it, actually entering the digits if you want. I'm going to adjust it one more time here, get the grid size. It doesn't have to be spot on. I also need to come back in and make the grid less opaque. And here we go. And I call this phase the blobbing out of the design. I'm using the number five flat brush and I'm just going to make some very broad shapes. Um, I start by dividing the room into two-thirds and one-third, a living room on the left and a dining room on the right. And I just want to get approximate sizes. I have the grid underneath. It no longer shows in the video replay, but that same grid is underneath. And I'm drawing things that I know to be a certain size, so I'm referring to the grid. I don't want to be too unaccurate at this point, but I also want to just be really gestural and create this living room and this dining room and I know that things are approximately the right size but now I'm going to refine them so I double check with the uh, technical pen I've got 12 feet that's a little less than a third but I'm going to start there that gives me adequate clearance from the back of a dining room chair over to the walls it looks like a 42 inch wide by 10 foot table fits nicely I'm going to put a couple of what you would call sideboards, I suppose, with table lamps on that wall. They're going to create nice views as you look down the length of the room to either side of the fireplace. I know that the walls will have a certain thickness, and I know my piano is going to need a three-foot clearance from that shelf behind it. I'm going to need a clearance from the fireplace to the sectional. All of this is just completely 
made up without becoming overly stiff, without using a scale, but Googling things when I need to check on the size of something, check on the size of a sofa, check on the size of a parson table. I don't know what's going to go everywhere, but I'm just going with this entirely intuitive process, laying out a carpet underneath. Now, since this isn't the final drawing, I'm going to just stay right on top of this layer and I'm going to switch to red and just clarify a few more things for myself, like the size of each piece of the sectional, the size of the fireplace, some of the critical clearances. Is my dining room table really going to work at that size? What happens if I give the dining room chairs a little bit more definition? So it's, it's being massaged towards a drawing that I can share with other people that I know is accurate that will be more responsible when I take it to the next level. So now I'm going to come in with a final line work uh, using the number one technical pen and I'm going to combine some straight lines but pretty much stay with this freehand line approach. Very scratchy lines. They're not pretty. They're not meant to be pretty but they are getting the job done and they're allowing me to behave in a very intuitive way and um, really make some progress with this design. I'm even putting in the logs in the fireplace just to add some realism. Now here's the dining room table again. I know it's probably going to have a centerpiece. I'm going to make the chairs more real. And you can see it's moving towards something that I can show to other people and uh, they won't think I've been completely sloppy about it. So uh, I'm going to finish these things. I'm going to double check some dimensions. I'm going to come back and show some wall thicknesses. I'm going to put some structure in, assuming that the room will be broken into three. Um, that's going to help me figure out where windows and sliding doors might go. And at the end, I slide the entire set of furniture over a little bit because I, I got a little bit too jammed into the right wall. Now even I think this is too basic, so before I show this to somebody, I want to put a little tone on it. So I get out the number five flat brush and just some black and gray, and I start almost like a magic marker, or very much like a magic marker, just hitting each thing just to make it pop a little. I make some of the things darker than others. I can even add things at this stage. I can put the tone down first and then add the line drawing on top of that. Uh, I'll look back over it. What am I missing? I'm missing the carpet. Let's bring that up and I'll give that some tone, but I'll give it tone right over the rest of the things. And then I'll pop a little tone in the walls, maybe add some to the logs. So this is what I ended up with and um, it's a little empty for me. Now in the next series we're going to be actually rendering this in color, but right now I want to give it a little extra pop. So I'm going to create a new layer and surround it with a gray and then put some white lettering on top of that gray just to give it a little polish and um, now it is it's very basic but anyone that you show this to will be able to understand your concept and could literally start building it in SketchUp. Don't forget that in part two we will take this plan and we will project it up into elevations We'll render those elevations, and then in the last part of the series, we'll actually do a perspective from this room. So you're not going to want to miss that. And be sure to download the free one-click guide to the 120-plus tutorials on this channel. You'll be able to sort them any way you want and click through directly to the video from the HTML link on the left side. Thanks, everybody.